Path of Sorcery is a really great mod that overhauls the magic in Skyrim. Unlike Pogus Maximus and Ordinator, it does not improve the other perk trees, but that's okay, I mean, we're only really interested in the necromancy anyway. So let's take a look at the new Conjuration perk tree and see how it improves Skyrim's necromancy. The first perk in the tree is the Student Conjuration perk. It's a fairly standard perk and decreases the magic cost of Conjuration magic and improves spell duration by 0.75% per Conjuration level. From here we'll go left to the Acolyte perk, which will start us on the path to Necromancy. The Acolyte perk is the first Necromancy perk in the Conjuration Tree. It allows you to harvest bones from corpses, and allows you to reanimate the corpse three times before the corpse will decompose into ash. From here you can continue left along the path of minion crafting, or go right to invest points into reanimation perks. We'll go left for now and come back to your animation later. Now we come to the bone craft perk, which is where stuff starts getting good. When you take the perk, you'll be granted the Assemble Skeleton spell. This spell will be used to craft all your minions with. With a single point invested, you can craft bone servants. They require a complete set of bones, a skull, a rib cage, two arms, two legs, two feet, and two hands. A filled petty soul gem is also required. Bone servants are your typical skeleton trooper, and they're spawned naked and without equipment. As such, you'll have to dress them. They'll perform whatever role you give them, so if you want archers, then give them a bow and arrows. If you want warriors, provide them with melee weaponry. Better yet, give them both. Then they'll use the bow until the enemy comes close, and then they switch to the melee weaponry once the enemy is in range. They'll make use of any armor that you give them, and they will wear it. However, only iron helmets will display on them. A bit of a shame. I'd love to be able to dress them up in a special uniform, but unfortunately that's not possible. It's not the mod's fault either. I think it's to do with the skeleton models. If anyone knows a mod out there that allows skeletons to display armor, please let me know. But I think it would have to be a mod that affects the base skeleton model of the game. I'm aware of the Armored Skeletons and the Walking Dead mod, but I don't think these will work because they add new models into the game. But I might be wrong about that. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, the Burned Servants can't carry very much, especially if you dress them completely in armor and give them weaponry, but they'll still be capable of carrying a little bit of loot for you. You'll just need a lot of them if you want to carry a lot of loot. When you invest two points into bone craft, you'll be able to construct advanced minions. The first of these is the bone white. The bone white is a stronger and larger skeleton, which requires a complete set of bones and a lesser soul gem. Although the whites are tougher than the servants, both minions will scale in strength with your conjuration level and remain useful parts of your armies for the entire game. The second advanced minion that you get is the Bone Walker. For these you need a Troll Skull and a Lesser Soul Gem, in addition to a Rib Cage and all the rest you need for a normal skeleton. These minions are really fantastic in close quarters fights. They howl when entering combat, which sounds really great. Their running speed is faster than that of a skeleton, and they hesitate less in combat. They also have a charge ability that lets them close distances very quickly, and they attack using their claws. The only problem with them is finding the troll skulls to craft them with. Occasionally you can buy them from a merchant or steal them from someone's house. They're also in some dungeons, but they can in general be pretty hard to find. The bone walker is well worth the trouble though. Unfortunately, you can't loot dead trolls for the skulls either, which I find strange. Finally, you also get to craft a bone horse. The bone horse requires horse bones, and a horse skull, and a common soul gem. Horse corpses are harder to come by than humanoid corpses, but there's enough destroyed wagons along the roads of Skyrim with dead horses nearby. Looting the dead horse and stealth will allow you to harvest its bones. One of the best things about the Bone Horse is that it works like a normal minion. It will follow you around when you're on foot, 
which makes it insanely better than a normal Skyrim horse that just stands anchored where it is unless you're riding it. The burn horse is also a lot faster than your skeletons, so it can be useful in hunting down wounded fleeing enemies that your skeletons can't catch. However, the horse isn't very tough and has a tendency to rush forward into battle and get killed before the rest of your minions have caught up. All of these minions that you build using the bones of your enemies are permanent and only expire when killed by an enemy or by yourself, which is really fantastic. Next we come to the Ossuary perk. It allows you to harvest more bones from corpses and it also increases the amount of bones you get back when deconstructing minions. If you're lucky you'll also get the soul gem back. This is a great perk in general but it also helps lessen the blow of losing minions by occasionally returning the soul gems to you. It can happen in hard fights that you lose every single minion and have to start again from scratch. The Ancient Tongues perk gives you the ability to tell your minions to wait and follow, as well as the cool minions power which allows you to summon the minions to your location. I haven't had any need as of yet to command my minions to wait. It would be far more useful if I could command all of them to wait, instead of one by one, as I tend towards larger armies. The cool minion's power is very useful because minions can get lost or stuck, and you will need to teleport them to your current location. Instead of teleporting them all at once, minions are teleported to you one by one. Crypt Lore allows you to upgrade your minions so that they become magic users. When you activate a minion, you get the opportunity to provide it with fire, frost, or void salts. The effect this has varies between the minions. If you upgrade the skeleton, it turns him into an elemental mage, as you can see here with this burn white that I upgraded using fire salts. Now he throws fire bolts. Upgrading skeletons in this way is very effective. When you upgrade burn walkers, their claws then become augmented with that element so they will slash and deal magic damage in addition to their regular damage. For burn walkers though, there is an unfortunate side effect. The burn walkers tend to hang back in combat once you upgrade them. They won't move to engage an enemy in melee until the enemy is very close. As far as I can see, this kind of ruins them because they don't have any ranged attack, so they kind of just hover there, hesitating, almost just like they want to use a range attack that they don't have. For this reason I just stick to upgrading the skeletons. The burn walkers are good enough as they are anyway. The chosen disciple perk allows you to buff a single minion with a 100 hit point boost and protection from fatal harm. In other words, the minion is flagged as essential. It's useful to make an expensive minion immortal, especially one you've upgraded with magical assaults. Curiously, the immortality provided to the minion does not seem to function exactly like your standard essential flag. Normally essential NPCs will sort of kneel down and wait a while before standing up and continuing the combat. However, my disciples have only ever stood up after the combat has ended, not during it. So if my observations are correct, your disciple will not continually rejoin fights once vanquished. I find this quite nice because it means the minion won't die permanently and you can get it back once the fight has concluded, but it's not going to keep rejoining the fight and making it too easy. Finally, at the end of the crafting branch of the Conjuration Tree, we have the Lord of Bones perk. It allows you to craft Bone Walker Abominations and Bone Dragons. The Bone Walker Abominations are highly useful. They're more or less the same as a standard Bone Walker, except they're much tougher. They have wings, dragon plate, armor, and a burn necklace. Think of them as an improved version of the burn walker. To make them, you need all the same stuff as for a standard burn walker, in addition to a greater soul gem and some dragon burns. The burn dragon should be cool, but they're not. They're expensive to build and perform worse in combat and in general than your standard skeletons or burn walkers will. I summoned one and he refused to follow me, and I couldn't teleport him to my position using the cool minion's power either, so he kind of just stood there and was useless. So in my opinion, the bone dragon should be cool, but it isn't. It suffers from typical lousy Skyrim dragon AI. That's it for the minion crafting perks, but there's still the reanimation side of the perk tree to explore. The first of these is the necromancy perk. 
It doubles the duration of raised and summoned undead, and the duration is increased by another 50% if the corpse is fresh. The feel no pain perk is pretty simple. It buffs your reanimated undead with 100 armor and 25% magic resistance. A pretty nice buff. My favorite reanimation perk is the Plague Carrier perk. When reanimated undead attack and melee, they deal disease damage. But better yet, when they die, disgusting bugs erupt from their corpse and go off to attack things. The bugs seem permanent and will crawl around looking for enemies. The Relentless is your standard buff perk, it just makes your animated undead deal 50% more damage and move 15% faster, and attack 15% faster. The Dark Souls perk increases your animated undead health by 3 per your level. That's your actual level, not your conjuration level, I believe. And allows them to be raised an infinite amount of times, so you won't have any more dust piles. King of Worms is the final perk in the reanimation branch, and it permits you to have two summoned or reanimated undead. This increases to three at night. It's a nice perk for sure, if you're making heavy use of reanimations, otherwise it probably won't interest you much. So now it's time to give the mod a score. Has it got plentiful minions? It definitely does. There's no limit at all to how many minions you can create. Has it got useful minions? The minions are extremely useful. The minions are not only good for combat, but they can be used to carry torches to light dungeons up with, and also to carry loot. You can even build your own mount, the skeleton horse. Minions can be tailored to fit a magnitude of different combat roles. Warriors, archers, and mages are all possible. The bone walkers are extremely good in melee, and skeletons can excel in any role. These can then be supplemented by a reanimation or two that'll explode into a swarm of bugs on death. So you can have a really nice army in this mod. Are the minions permanent? Yep. The bone crafted minions are all permanent. There's no stupid timers or anything like that to ruin your fun. Is the caster weak and squishy? Most definitely. Investing points only into conjuration keeps your caster nice and squishy. The minions will have to do all the fighting for you. What about craftable minions? Oh yes, the minions are wonderful to craft. You require different kinds of bones and different kinds of soul gems. Harvesting the bones from your enemies is fun too. The mod also has really nice little menus that list all the requirements, or all the ingredients that you need to create a minion with. I'm going to give this mod a 10 out of 10. It's the most satisfying necromancy experience I've had in Skyrim so far. I especially like the minion variety with the bone walkers and how they howl before charging in. I like how I've got to provide equipment for my skeletons, and I like how the skeletons can be upgraded. I also enjoyed the crafting. The mod also feels really nicely polished. If I had to criticize this mod, I'd say the biggest things missing are firstly, the ability to command all minions at once, traps are the most deadly enemy your minions will face. It would be extremely beneficial if I could tell all minions to stay where they are, like a cannon ordinator. Then, while the skeletons are all waiting there, I can safely navigate my way around the trap, get to the other side, and then use the cool minion spell to teleport all my minions safely past the trap to me. As it is now, you're likely to lose minions from bypassing traps because they will all follow you blindly through and trigger it. The ability to repair a dead minion would be very welcome. Instead of looting a dead minion to get the items back, then decomposing it to get the bones and the soul gem back, then creating the minion again and giving it the equipment back, it would be far more convenient to just be able to spend a few extra bones to repair a dead minion and have it stand up with all its stuff and not having to recreate it. This mod scored a 9 out of 10 in the craftable minions section. If it were to score a 10 out of 10, I'd require something more from it. Lair crafting. In Mysterious Bear's epic necromancy mod for Oblivion, you can convert your home or any area into a necromancy lair. You can tell your minions to guard the lair, and they'll stay there and guard it from intruders and trespassers. You can build defensive structures to damage enemies that are trying to invade your lair. And you can construct machines that will generate the components needed for crafting minions with. So you don't always have to go out on a killing spree to make minions. 
The Mage Guild will also send Battle Mages to raid your lair, so the defenses and guard minions are really needed. Finally, Apprentice Necromancers will come to your lair and pledge allegiance to you, and serve as extra minions. If this mod did something like that, or something even better than that, it'd be even more awesome and I'd probably give it a 10 out of 10 for the crafting section. Path of Sorcery is a truly fantastic mod and I wholeheartedly recommend it.